Good morning, everyone. I wanted to tell you a little bit about this place before we headed out, but it's like the second or third biggest national park here on Chiloé Island. And actually it's privately owned and we met uh, the owners, Martin's father built this property. This, this building we're in this hotel and the other buildings about 27 years ago. Uh, now Martin, the son, runs it. And it's just a beautiful park. They have a few cabanas, a few hotels. They typically don't allow camping, but because it's the off season, they made an exception. And so uh, there were a few people hiking the trails, not a lot. We mostly had the place to ourselves and we really enjoyed our time here. It was comfortable. Uh, Martin uh, let us use the bathrooms here in one of the rooms. So we kind of had our private bathroom, which was very nice. And we just spent our days hanging out and relaxing and really kind of just walking around these different forests, these different bosques. I did a couple night hikes looking for cats, which I didn't find. And mostly just kind of spotting the poodoo. There's a lot of poodoo here. And that was really magical. We had some really cool moments with those. And also there's quite a few birds. And so we just really enjoyed hanging out and relaxing in this nice little national park. The weather was great for us. It's a little cool and brisk this morning as the sun comes up. But today is moving day. And so we're going to get things ready. And we're going to head out to the coast. Now we have not been to the true Pacific coast down here in Chile yet. We've kind of been on some of these fjords, but we're actually going to go over to the coast and take a look and we're going to bring you guys with us today. So let's go. We are headed to the coast. And we're out of the way, uh, we're leaving this beautiful park, but we had to make one stop and do a little hike here on the way out. Supposed to, to be some really pretty trees. Yeah, these are supposed to be amazing trees. What's the story with them? They're uh, super tall. They're super tall because the kind of tree they are, they need to, um, they need to reach through the forest to get to the sunlight. It's a little chilly this morning. A little chilly this morning. We're going to build up some heat. This is 10 stations, one kilometer. I believe that's one way. We literally get to walk under and through this tree. Look at this. Wow. We are inside of the tree. <laughs> Look at that, guys. We just walked under a tree, like through it and under it. So the big trees here are called canelo trees and they were used by the indigenous people, the Machi people, 
commonly for ceremonies. And the thing about these is they have a lot of tannins in them. So if you remember, the water is kind of a caramel color or brown. That's from these trees. Now they spread quickly and their bark is really good. So they're insect repellents. So they spread fast and they're really good. They don't make for good firewood because they put off a pungent smell. But they're commonly used for making furniture and also for making musical instruments. So that's the trees. It's like I'm a little troll running through the forest. Run, forest, run! <laughs> Look at this thing, guys. This is crazy. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, and I see why they call it the cathedral. They're just everywhere. Look at these. And some of them are covered in moss, but a lot of them are not. I guess the red bark just shuns it away. But a really beautiful forest, these trees, wow. So I climbed down in here, and now I gotta climb out. Oh, it's gonna be a climb, <laughs> but we got this. Let's go. I made it up all the stairs and all the climbing. What a pretty little hike. There's the van. I'm pretty happy to see it, to be honest. But uh, I love this forest, how even when things are dead, like the trees have fallen over, they still seem to be alive with all the moss and sometimes even fresh twigs growing out of something you know has been dead for years. It's like things want to live here. Also, before we leave this park, eh? I want to tell you we learned how to say it. Tepuque, no? Tepuico, that's it. Parque Tepuico. <laughs> we have just pulled out of the reserve. Tepuico. Tepuico. So excited we learned how to say it. And we will be going up here to the main road and headed west towards the coast. Now the whole time we're doing that, we'll be driving just north of the reserve property because this property goes all the way to the coast. And when we get to the coast, we're probably gonna go back on the reserve. Look around over there and see what it's like over there. But first up, we are 100% out of food. Luckily this morning we were able to fill up with water but we need food. And we hear Martin has told us that there's a little grocery store over on the coast. That's where we're headed. So we're on this at this little coastal town and we were looking for a tienda on Google Maps and couldn't find one. 
But Martine said, this is a place to come. And they called it the mall, because <laughs> you can come in here and get everything you need. They have a little bit of everything, but it's not on the Google or anything. And it's kind of discreet. So he said, you can ask anybody, they'll know where it is. And so we found a little market where we can get some supplies and supply up. Look, they got a lot of nice veg. Cool. Right. To be a small little town and a not so extravagant looking grocery store from the outside. The mall had it all. Had everything we needed. We got full grosh. Say hello to the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> we are driving south along the coast back into the reserve that we left this morning, but a different entrance. You can only get here by leaving and coming back from the forest side. So they got the forest side and the coast side. And we're gonna head on up in here and see what we can find. So are we on the Chilliway Pacific Coast Highway? <laughs> I think we might be. So we go down this road for 11 kilometers. We were on the coast for the first couple of kilometers and now we've kind of turned up into the coastal cliffside mountains. We can no longer see the ocean from here, but we're going through a little farming community with sheep and cows and chickens and little farmhouses. And it's one of the favorite things we get to do on this journey is drive through little just true cultural places like this and see how real locals live in these areas. But we have maybe six more kilometers to go and you may be able to hear that it is a bumpy road but hopefully it's going to be worth it we're going to a walk to the beach let's go all right a quick little look at the trail map we're going to do the sendero sendero del tiempo so the trail of time it looks like we're on the yellow trail there so we have a couple little river crossings bridge crossings and it looks like there's an observation deck out there. So I'm pretty sure this bull is looking at you guys, not at me. I know these can be temperamental sometimes. So there's that. All right, so we are here. Yes. Estamos acá en el río Pumol. Desde ahí al Muelle del Tiempo son dos kilómetros. Dos kilómetros. It's about, in time, mm, 30 minutes, más o menos? Yes. 20 minutos? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that was the park ranger. Just met her on the trail and she dropped some knowledge on me. And uh, now we're off and running again. And we've kind of turned through what leaks to be some short sedge grass or something. These look like calafete plants and berries but they're red and I think calafete berries are blue I don't know if these are a variant or what my wristwatch is broken my shoes are untied time is a ticking and so is the tide but I am not worried Things are what they are Come rain or come shine Or a shooting star I've been to the south I've been to the north East and the west in The middle of course I may have been a stray but I've never been lost Never been beat by the road I've crossed Definitely cool. You come down through the dunes and then if I walk up here you can see the face of these cliffs and it's just literally like a sandstone and you can just take your finger and wipe it away. It's amazing that this stone stands the test of time like it does. Wow. And as we look across here, if you look at the tops of all the trees, 
Look at how they're all slanted and angled. You can just see the effects of wind over time on these trees as well. So they built this little spiral bridge out here on this point. And the cool thing about this bridge is, is it circles around, it goes up. And it gives you all these different views of the coastline. Look at that. And I can even see some cormorants down there on the beach. But you get a full look of this whole entire park. And I gotta tell you, this is much better than I expected. Wow. La, la, la. like here's mama and the baby <laughs> there's three <laughs> look at them go and now we have horses and I've been seeing plenty of horse poo so I was wondering where the horses were a black one and a brown one right there eating some grass so these birds are interesting if you watch them they're like little some kind of little sparrows or something you guys can tell me but one of them it looks like the male every once in a while feeds the other one and I don't know if that's a female feeding the baby like maybe it's pretty small or something but it's pretty cool they're just kind of Bouncing along here, picking at seeds and insects. And yeah, and I'm watching them. And so are you. So I might not have been able to do that hike with Kurt yesterday afternoon, but first thing this morning, we found a beautiful beach for me to take a walk on. It was a rocky beach. Walk with me. Let's leave the past behind walk with me there's something else we need to find say you'll go don't make me wait there's no need to hesitate let's make footprints Alright, 
This is how we cross back. And then there's a little place cut in the hill back there that we can climb up. Ooh, let's go see what happens. All right. Low tide crossing. <laughs> They've got them a little bridge built here. Oh, nice and solid, no problem. I was afraid for no reason. I was able to walk on the beach side, hear the waves, smell the ocean, uh, saw some, I think maybe clam fishermen sifting through some mud there, three of them on the other side. Couldn't really tell what they were trying to do, but I'm gonna call it clamming. And with that guys, we're gonna wind this video down. We will see you guys in a few days from somewhere else here in Chile. Cheers. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!